ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, another day when I'm very pleased to welcome you uh, to the presentation of our financial results, this time for the half year, uh, ended September 30th, uh, 20th, uh, 2011. You are aware, of course, that this is our third year as a quoted company. And uh, in the three years and even before, we have continued to endeavor uh, to meet the obligations that go with our standing in this economy. Uh, more lately, of course, uh, after the, the uh, IPO, uh, to meet the obligations of the Capital Markets Authority and the Stock Exchange. As we present these results, we uh, are reminded of the backdrop of an increasingly challenged micro macroeconomic uh, situation in the country. Inflation has been on, the, on a steady increase and uh, a relentless fall in the value of the Kenya shilling against not just the dollar but all international currencies has put unprecedented pressure, not only on this company but other companies as well as the economy in general. Significantly, in pressure, uh, inflation uh, has built another pressure point uh, and substantially reduced household incomes and, dis and particularly the discretionary element of household uh, incomes. Faced with these uh, difficult macroeconomic uh, issues, uh, the central bank has made moves to try and uh, cushion uh, at least uh, the uh, exchange rates. And uh, we hope that these will result in some uh, salutary effects. Of course, this goes at a cost because uh, the central bank I guess has been forced to raise interest rates and these impinge not only on individual incomes but also more seriously on uh, enterprises that have to depend on borrowed capital and interest rates now uh, bordering around 20% are a very new challenge and a very strong challenge to all of us. We continue to be subject to regulatory scrutiny. We consider this to be okay, it's, it's welcome, and we appreciate greater uh, surveillance by the regulator, although we of course always want to uh, believe or to desire that this should be done uh, on a very uh, level playing field. We support the government's efforts to undertake a nationwide subscriber registration, uh, registration exercise. This is in line with best practice and it's also in the interest of all of us from all points of view uh, that uh, subscribers should be registered. Um, the government has also initiated action uh, on clamping down counterfeit uh, devices. Uh, we hope that this will be done, uh, taking account of the fact, of course, that it's got to be done uh, so that it does not hurt uh, the proper conduct of business. We believe if these initiatives by the government are properly uh, executed, everybody stands to benefit. 
As a company, we continue to run a business that's committed to creating value for all its uh, stakeholders, not just the shareholders, but our customers, uh, investors, and everybody else. We remain committed to offering innovative, affordable, and life-changing solutions to our customers. And we must always strive to do this in a manner that guarantees a sound return on investment. This is, a, this is pivotal to our commercial strategy in a market where there is heightened competition. We repeat again, uh, competition, we hope, will be on the level playing field. The takeoff of our investment in non-traditional services like data, and of course, our most globally recognized product, m -Pesa, which I believe is now being replicated in a whole lot of countries, is a clear justification of our strategic direction for going forward. And as Bob will be indicating to you, this is uh, being justified uh, or proving, uh, being proved the right strategy in terms of our return on investment. With these few words, and I would like now to welcome Bob to come and uh, give you a more thorough uh, presentation of our results, which in the circumstances, I would like to say, uh, reflect the solid and strong and sound base of this company. And hopefully you also agree with me that the company is still very well founded and being uh, very well run. With that remark, uh, Bob, please come and make the presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the half-year results for the year 2011-2012. <clears throat> When we presented these results this time last year, we had been operating in an environment where the calling charges were at eight shillings a minute, fuel prices was at 90 shillings a liter, and the shilling was at 80 shillings to the dollar. Over the period on the review, calling charges have fallen to as low, and in fact still remains, even on Safaricom, as low as one shilling a minute. Fuel prices have escalated to as high as 122 shillings uh, a litre. And of course, we're all aware that the Kenya shilling has devalued considerably against all major currencies. So it is against this background that we're very proud to be presenting to you what we consider to be a very resilient set of results today. So let's take a look at the environment within which Safaricom has been operating during this period. The Kenyan economy has experienced one of the toughest economic climates in recent past, which has made it a more challenging environment in which to operate. We've seen the impact of the, economic, the European economic crisis. We've seen high inflation, which is driven by uh, rising food and particularly energy costs. And we've had rising interest rates and a rapidly depreciating shilling that has weakened by as much as 20%. <clears throat> and these have all combined to reduce the spending power of our customers and has driven up the cost of doing business here in Kenya. Now, our industry has seen its challenges. Rising operational costs across the board, coupled with declining voice revenues as a consequence of the intense price war, has negatively impacted the entire industry. And in addition to the perennial problems of uh, network cable cuts, it has amplified the challenges of providing a reliable connectivity for our customers. 
There has, however, been some positive developments on the regulatory front. The anticipated reduction in mobile termination rates from the 1st of July 2011 did not take place, as the government sought to better understand the full impact that this would have on the economy as a whole. Secondly, mobile number portability was launched in April, but has had a very negligible impact, with fewer than 18 thousand customers leaving Safaricom. SIM registration is an ongoing exercise, but we're pleased to say that more than 85% of our current customer base has already been registered. We welcome the CCK announcement of the reduction in frequency uh, usage fees by at least 40% in some instances, which will take effect from next year. And this will give us full year savings <coughs> in the region of 1.4 billion shillings going forward. And we're proud that our focus on improving the quality of our network is paying off. The CCK Quality of Service reports published recently shows that we now meet six out of the eight quality service parameters which are measured by the CCK. This is a 100% improvement from last year. We recognize the increasing needs from our customers for a superior but affordable data connectivity. Our data customers now account for over 10% of the Kenyan population. And indeed, 95% of all internet access in Kenya is made on a Safaricom connected device. And by further expanding our distribution network and by making available affordable data enabled devices, we are ensuring that every Kenyan has the opportunity to access the internet using the widest, the fastest, and the most affordable connection in the region. We recognize that our younger customers are at the forefront of the data boom in Kenya, and this is why we're offering them a superior social networking experience on Facebook, on Twitter, and on SMS, with daily low denominations and flexible internet bundles. Our enterprise business unit is on track to become the market leader in integrated business communication solutions. We now offer an extensive range of ICT services from data center services, online strategies, software and applications, and business, con business continuity and private and public clouds. And this is provided across the country through our extensive 3G, WiMAX and fiber connections. With the recent increase in competition and with calling rates dropping to amongst the lowest in the world, it has become imperative for mobile service providers to add value to the primary services of voice and SMS. The customers are now have more choice and are looking for services that go beyond the basics. And to this end, we have successfully launched the revolutionary web box, which is an internet access device that allows you to access the internet via an ordinary TV. We've launched DSTV streaming on your handsets. We've introduced SMS for Facebook and for Twitter for customers with non-data enabled handsets. We've also launched the most sophisticated converged billing system in Africa. We've enhanced and we've revamped Okoa Jahazi, which is our airtime advance service, Skiza, our caller ringback tone, as well as our Bunga loyalty program. And of course, we continue to expand and add further functionality to the revolutionary M-Pesa service. The future of our business lies in understanding our customers and their ever-changing needs. We'll now review the dynamics of the telecommunications industry as a whole in Kenya. Mobile penetration still has room for growth. According to the CCK, who published the report as of June of this year, mobile penetration is still only at 6 to 4%. And this, of course, refers to SIM cards on all of the networks and not to distinct, uh, distinct subscribers. There continues to be increased competition in the voice segment, with headline voice tariffs falling by over 80% in the past year. A strategy to diversify, to empesa, to data and to other value-added services provides a hedge 
from falling voice ARPUs. Internet is still predominantly accessed through mobile platforms. M-Pesa continues to be one of the most transformative business tools in the country and continues to grow in its significance as a financial inclusion tool that has dramatically changed the way that, con that Kenyans conduct their day-to-day -day activities. Now, we strongly believe that our strategy has been the right one. We're making excellent progress in our transition from a mobile voice service provider to a provider of integrated communication solutions. We continue to grow our revenues through expansion of our other, uh, of our other revenue streams with a key focus on data and M-Pesa and reducing our reliance on voice. We've made key capital investments in fixed data infrastructure, 3G network, switching capacity, fiber connectivity, and increased capacity to our existing 2G infrastructure. And this has given us the ability to support the growth in customers and to provide them with the ultimate experience in communication services. And this strategy has ensured that by focusing on the needs of our customers, and by continuing to innovate and by adding value to our product offerings, we remain the market leader. Now, we have successfully executed our strategy, guaranteeing continued growth in the company. And through our strategy, we have grown our customer base to 18.1 million customers. Revenues have increased by 5.3% to 49.6 billion shillings. Now, voice revenues declined by 5.5%. And the voice sector of our business has shown considerable resilience based on the fact that it is within this period that the tariffs dropped by over, eight, by over 80% from eight shillings a minute to one shilling a minute. Our MPESA and our data offerings are undeniably the market leaders in their respective sectors with a total data revenue growth of 30%, M-Pesa had the highest growth at 49%, with broadband at 36% growth. And this is a clear demonstration that we remain Kenya's preferred network and that our products and services are indeed making a constructive difference to the lives of our customers. Now, M-Pesa is still in its infancy but has once again produced exemplary results. The Impesa customer base of 15 million customers now represent a penetration of 82% of our 18 million customers. There's also been phenomenal growth in the number of agents to 32,000 in 2011. We continue training and monitoring these agents for KYC or Know Your Customers and for anti-money laundering. And PESA revenues were up by 49% in the period under review to 7.9 billion shillings. And during this period, over 314 billion shillings was transferred on MPESA. MPESA continues to have significant growth as it evolves into, more, into a more sophisticated financial tool. As the MPESA portfolio expands to accommodate the diverse needs of our customers, we believe that it is yet to make a bigger impact in the lives of our users through micro-insurance, micro-savings, micro-credit, and easy payment facilities added on to the basic money transfer service. Within a short period of time, we become the preferred data provider, data service provider in Kenya. The period just saw a strong growth in our data customers with 43% growth to 5.1 million data users, which represents 28% of our customer base. Our data revenues have grown tremendously to 3.1 billion shillings, which represents a 36.3% rise as a result of increased data numbers, uh, data customers, our superior data offering, and our reduced internet prices. With 92%, as I said earlier, 92% of our internet subscriptions in Kenya being done on Safaricom-connected devices, we are undeniably 
the market leaders in mobile broadband. We're committed to offering cutting edge technology and reliable connectivity. And to this end, we continue to upgrade our network, which is now 52% 3G active. We now offer superior internet speeds with mobile data speeds of 21 megabits per second and trials for 42 megabits per second currently in progress. Our reduction of internet prices by up to 60% has made our data offering more affordable and attractive, thereby driving further data use. Our enterprise business, our enterprise business unit is our business arm that is driving penetration into the corporate data market with great success. As demand for our business solution grows, we have seen our fixed data connections grow by 92% in the period. Our range of services now include data center services, video and teleconferencing, private and public clouds, and managed services. And we continue to invest in technology and partnerships in both the public and the private sectors as we roll out a broad range of health and education solutions. On the education front, we're building partnerships with local and global e-learning content providers to deliver solutions spanning the entire education sector. I've launched Safaricom Cloud, the largest indigenous cloud in Africa. This will enable us to offer a local, robust, comprehensive, and secure managed services for any size of enterprise right here in Kenya. We remain firm in our focus to grow in data and in PESA as we believe that they form the cornerstone of our future growth. And with sustained investment, we will remain at the forefront of technological advancement, guaranteeing our customer reliable connectivity. And to this end, our target areas for capital investment remain 3G upgrades and fiber connectivity. We recognize that one of the key impediments of entry for data customers is the cost of the terminals. We therefore intend to expand our retail and distribution network and make available affordable data-enabled devices. And by doing this, we will ensure that every Kenyan has the opportunity to access the, the internet using the widest, the fastest, and the most affordable internet connection in the region. M-Pesa has experienced great success since its inception <coughs> as a simple money transfer service and, now transforming, and is now transforming into a fully-fledged financial tool. Safaricom has a very well-deserved reputation for being innovative and thereby enjoying its first mover advantage. Now, we intend to continue being market leaders in all sectors. I'd now like to hand you over to uh, Chris, who will take you through the details of the financials. Chris. Good afternoon, everybody, and Karibu. As mentioned earlier, this has been one of the toughest operating environments, but our revenues have shown resilience to the adverse macroeconomic impact and, more importantly, declining tariffs. The full impact of the decline in tariffs has come through in this half year, as compared with last half year, where the tariff impact was only experienced for the final six weeks of that period. Total revenues have increased by 5.3% from 47.1 billion to 49.6, and this has been driven significantly through the growth in data and in PESA. Our strategy to diversify into non-voice revenue services has definitely paid off. Data revenues are rapidly rising to make up a, sing a significant portion of our revenue contribution and compensating for the decline in voice revenues. At this stage, at the end of September, M-Pesa is now accounting for 17% of our overall ongoing service revenues. Mobile broadband is contributing 6.7%, and SMS has slightly reduced to 7.9%. On the three non-voice revenue channels, which now contributes 31.7% of ongoing revenues, this represents almost more than a third 
of our ongoing service revenue. The non-service revenue streams are supporting, as mentioned before, the decline in voice revenues and ARPUs, which now only account for 68.3% of our ongoing service revenue. We continue to have strong double-digit growth in the two key non-voice revenue areas of data and MPESA, and we expect this trend to continue going forward. On the cost side, however, the period has seen a rise in our costs on the back of in the increasing challenging macroeconomic environment. Our operating costs have increased by 23% in the period due to growth predominantly in interconnect costs, increased CCK license fees as a result of our continued network expansion, the 0.5% universal access service fund fee, and, uh, and in, along with that, and I think more importantly, due to the inflationary impact, is the escalating energy costs that we've been experiencing. In view of the competitive and economic environment and increasing costs, we have put in place a number of initiatives continuing from the previous year um, and also adding additional that are aimed at protecting our bottom line. These include, but are not limited to, the reduction in data transmission costs, promotion of electronic top-ups, optimization of our corporate structure, and reducing the overall cost of site build. In the first half, these initiatives have yielded significant savings in the region of 1.8 billion shillings. SGNA has also increased by 26% in the period, and this has been driven predominantly by the net forex loss included in this number of 1.3 billion. And obviously, at the, at the back end is the rise in administrative costs um, of running our business. However, we do have some positive uh, reduction in marketing costs, which is reduced by 24%. So the impact of this on our EBITDA and underlying EBITDA is EBITDA has declined in the period by 21.6% to 14.8 billion. And this is inclusive of the forex impact as mentioned earlier. The depreciating shilling has had the highest impact on our operating costs during the period, and the unprecedented devaluation of the shilling within the period has led to a net forex loss and associated cost on revaluation of trading balances of 1.4 billion between direct costs and operating costs. When we review EBITDA and we exclude the impacts of, of Forex, the decline is 13.8%, mainly driven by operating expenses and declining voice revenues, and SGNA costs of 6.5 billion. I think worthy to note that excluding um, the Forex impact, EBITDA would be at 32.6%. CapEx is still a key focus area and will continue to be a key focus area for the business as we move forward. And CapEx has increased significantly by 55% during the period. And this is in line with our continued strategy of improving, firstly, the quality and capacity on our existing 2G network, but also um, increasing and furthering our, our uh, capacity and uh, quality and capability on 3G. The first half of the financial year saw a high intensity in capital investment of 31%. But this is, this is set to slow down in the second half of the financial year and be in line with a targeted range of 25%. The main investments, as Bob has alluded to, are in the areas of fixed data, 3G coverage, fiber connectivity, and the upgrade of our existing 2G coverage to support the phenomenal growth, not just in customers, but more traffic. We currently have 2,604 sites, of which 1,343 on our 3G active, representing 52% of our network. And in addition, our WiMAX sites have a national coverage of 195 sites at the end of September. So what is the impact on net income? And net income has largely been impacted by the decline in EBITDA. 
We do have a reduction uh, or an increase in depreciation, but we then also have a reduction in taxation over the period. The net impact of decline on net income is predominantly coming through from the reduced voice revenues and increased operating costs during the period. Um, and along with that has lowered our um, earnings per share for the period from 0.19 in the previous year to 0.1 this year. I shall now hand you over back to Bob to map out the future strategy of Safaricom. Asante Sana. A few words on the future outlook. Uh, we continue to evolve our financial and digital inclusion agenda through um, the Mpesa platform and through our data solutions. Our nationwide reach in terms of network coverage, M-PESA touch points, and customers has made us the technology and the in innovation partner of choice for government, for non-governmental organizations, and for other public and private sector players. As the M-PESA portfolio expands to accommodate, as the M-PESA portfolio expands to accommodate uh, the diverse needs of our customers, we believe that we can make it, we can make it make an even bigger contribution to the lives of our customers through, as I said earlier, micro-insurance, micro-savings, micro-credit, and easy payment features. We will continue to focus on our controllable costs to mitigate the inflationary and the exchange rate pressures and to protect our margins. Key focus areas include process re-engineering, streamlining of transmission and lease line cost, and the introduction of, managed, of a managed service model for network OPEX. Our focus will continue to be the provision of superior service that offers integrated communication solutions to our various customer segments. We will actively engage our customers as we seek their inputs in driving our innovations. We will continue to make it our focus to intimately understand the customer as well as the nature of the market. And it is this passion for our customers that will see us into further future success. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. But before I hand over to questions and answers, um, I would just like to say a personal word of thanks. Uh, Chris, this is his last uh, results announcement. Chris has been with the company for three years. And I'd like to thank him not only for helping to guide me through the past uh, 12 months of being here, um, but also for agreeing to extend his contract, which expired some months ago, to take us through to the end of the, uh, of the half year. So Chris, I'd like to say thank you very much, and we wish you well uh, in the future. Thank you.